Coming up on Mountain News at 6, a well-known Southern Kentucky man is found dead in his home. We are following the investigation. Plus, more details about a Breathitt County man charged with murder in connection to a woman who went missing. Plus, we are tracking some strong winds, heavy rain, and possibly some snow showers in the short term. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. We continue to look out for the threat of heavy rain and strong winds working into Eastern Kentucky. Our first alert weather day continues as meteorologist Cameron Aaron is monitoring the situation. Cameron. Yeah, Olivia, we are tracking some nice weather this evening. Be sure to enjoy that because changes are looming as early as tonight, all thanks to a more potent weather system. So we are tracking some different threats. Strong winds, the main threat. We could see winds up to 40 or 50 miles per hour. Also tracking some more heavier rain bands as well, possibly rain up to one or one and a half inches as we go into late Tuesday. And yes, maybe a few more snowflakes as well before it's all said and done as some cooler air begins to rush in by late Tuesday, also early on Wednesday. Day, but I do think the bigger threat for us will be from some strong straight line winds, possibly up to 40 or 50 miles per hour. This is a wind advisory through 7 o'clock on Tuesday, and yes, possibly a few spotty power outages as those gusty winds continue on Tuesday, also into early parts of Wednesday as well. Now, right now, we are dry on first alert pinpoint Doppler, but as we zoom out, we are tracking that stronger weather system, producing some heavy snow in Missouri and some severe weather in Mississippi, also Louisiana. Now, some good news for us no severe weather but we are tracking those heavy rain pockets also those strong gusty winds low temperatures tonight in the upper 30s and lower 40s as that moisture begins to increase also those winds increase as well more details on this system plus another system later this week coming up in just a few minutes olivia cameron thank you and as he said a lot of the mountains are under a wind advisory both power companies and airlines across the southeast are prepping for delays and outages as the strong gust could cause some damage to the takeoff and landing processes for planes. A representative from Kentucky Electric Cooperative spoke about how current conditions in Kentucky might allow trees and branches to fall on power lines. The broken branches that are already on the trees to come down first. Then we expect in the areas where maybe the ground is soft, if you get the biggest wind gusts that come through, even healthy trees to come down on power lines. And then we expect, you know, we have to be prepared for what weather happens after that so we can then work safely in those conditions to be able to restore power as quickly as possible. And you can download the WIMT First Alert weather app to keep up with the latest on the forecast. You can download it for free onto your tablet or phone from the App Store or Google Play Store. A murder investigation is underway in a southern Kentucky community after a man was found dead. The sheriff in Whitley County says 73-year-old Charles Oler was murdered. His body was found in his home Saturday on Cumberland Falls Highway. Few details on the investigation are known, but as WYMT's Phil Pendleton discovered, the victim was very well respected in his neighborhood and in the local farming community. It was a shock when word got out that Charlie Oler had been found dead in his home on Saturday. I've been on the conservation board 20 years, and I know he's been on it longer than I have. The 73-year-old Oler was well-known, respected, and admired within the local farming community. And had a little stand out there that people uh, would uh, buy corn and vegetables from him. He did that for many years, especially corn. He was basically known as the corn man. The last place. Whitley County Sheriff says Oler's daughter discovered him and their evidence tells them that he was murdered. I responded to the scene um, um, upon entering the residence. I immediately knew we had more than a, 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 a natural cause death. Police tell me they are actively withholding a lot of information in this case. They say they don't want to hinder the investigation. They are not telling us the cause or manner of death, exactly how this man was murdered. They also say they have a feeling, they have a belief on when the crime took place, but they are also not releasing that. The sheriff says it's not known how many people could be involved, and they're also not saying how they accessed Oler's home. 
but they do believe this case can be solved. You know, anytime you don't know your uh, um, your perpetrator right off the bat, it makes it a little more difficult, but we do have leads we're following up on. Police say they're also getting help from the Corbin Police Department. In Whitley County, Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. Along with a farmer, Francie Uller was also a Vietnam veteran. In Laurel County, two people are facing charges after police say there was an altercation. The incident happened yesterday afternoon. Deputies with the Sheriff's Office were dispatched to Finley Trailer Park Road following a complaint. Following an investigation, 61-year-old William Sweet of Florida and 35-year-old Michelle Allen of Indiana were taken into custody. Both Sweet and Allen were taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. We are learning new details in a high speed multi county chase. Bradley Kimbrell is being held in the Rockcastle County Detention Center on several charges. Investigators say Kimbrell sped off, leading police on a chase through Rockcastle, Laurel, and Madison counties. State police say as Kimbrell slowed down, he nearly hit a home. Investigators say Kimbrell ran from the truck through a wooded area where he was caught. A Breathitt County man has been charged with murder in connection to the disappearance of Joni Campbell. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox gives us the latest on the investigation. Police say the missing persons case led them to property connected to Fairley Napier. State police received a uh, complaint or a tip that a burnt vehicle had been located on the Spicewood Road in the South Fork community of Breathitt County. When they arrived, troopers say they found human remains. Detectives were called in to complete the investigation. Uh, through the course of their investigation, it was determined uh, that that property was actually being logged by uh, Fairly Napier. So that led us to uh, conduct interviews with him. Napier was then charged with murder and tampering with physical evidence. The investigation and just interviews uh, with Mr. Napier itself uh, give detectives probable cause to go ahead and make the arrest. As for the victim, the arrest citation stated the car matched the description of Joni Campbell's car. Napier was reportedly the last person who saw Campbell. Gayhart says while evidence points to the victim being Joni Campbell, police do not have 100% identification. Well, yeah, we're just going to continue the uh, missing persons case as well because at this point, uh, positive identification has not been made. Gayhart says the remains were sent to Frankfurt for an autopsy. And Hazard Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. There is not a timeline on when an autopsy report for the victim will be finalized. Fairly Napier is now lodged at the Kentucky River Regional Jail. Kentucky, Kentucky lawmakers were back in Frankfurt today to continue their own legislative session. More than 200 bills were filed in the first few days. The House has presented acts related to emergency medical preparedness in schools, death in the line of duty benefits, and blood donations. While the Senate has focused on parole for violent offenders and an act that would require ranked choice voting, the session wraps up in April. Kentuckians with a bench warrant have a chance to get their court dates rescheduled instead of being arrested. The ACLU of Kentucky has announced their second round of amnesty dockets. Most offenders with bench warrants get them after failing to appear in court, which is why the ACLU of Kentucky put together this opportunity. For amnesty, a person with an existing bench warrant can ask that their case be placed on the docket and their bench warrant set aside. A Daily Mail article is causing a stir within the community. The headline reads, Vatican slaps down Kentucky Catholic Church for giving private blessing to a lesbian couple. Historic St. Paul Catholic Church says that's not true. Stan J.R. Zerkowski is the director of the LGBT ministry at Historic St. Paul Catholic Church. He says over the past 10 years, they have been met with criticism and pushback but have come a long way. The Daily Mail article, they took everything out of context. First of all, the Vatican never uh, had anything to say to us at St. Paul, let alone slap us down. That did not happen. Number two, they had no idea what the context of that photo was. All they saw was a priest extending his hands in blessing 
over a same-sex couple in front of a Christmas tree. Sierkowski says a clarification that was issued from the Vatican does not have to do with their church. He says after the clarification, it does not affect the way they have been practicing their blessings. The education department, along with the search firm it has hired, reached out to get public input on the next commissioner. The release says the board needs thoughtful and candid input into the process to ensure voices from across Kentucky are heard as the selection is being made. The survey can be found on the KDE website and is due by February 16th. The search is underway after Jason Glass left last September after some high profile clashes with the legislature. Crews are continuing to work through ongoing water outages in Fleming Neon, trying to get water into their system. WYMT's RJ Johnson spoke with officials about how they are tackling this issue. For several days, people living in Fleming Neon and surrounding areas have been without water. I hate it. Four ever customers have been out. We've had some out for multiple days. Fleming Neon District Supervisor Nathaniel Wilder says they are trying any way they can to flow water into their system. We are currently trying to replace a valve. That way we can feed more from Letcher County water, part of our system. Um, there's our water crew, there's five of us. We have a contractor with us right now that's helping us do some of this work. While also having fire departments in the area haul water to the city for them to use. Fleming Neon Mayor Rick Burke says they're using that water to pump into their system. Pretty much we've been pumping, getting every drop of water anywhere we can get it. Uh, this is the backup source here, well, that we use. Uh, it normally gravity flows, but we now have a pump in it, pumping like 300 gallons per minute into this reservoir sending it to the city's treatment plant to be sent back out to folks living nearby. In the meantime, with low water levels in the city's tank due to a dry summer and fall, Wilder says rain can help in the future. However, they need to wait for more water to move into the tank. Rain sitting on the ground, it takes it quite a while to work its way through the ground, through the rock to get to the mine. So the rain helps a lot and it'll help us plenty in the future. But right now it's still waiting game to get it back. However, they hope this can be a solution until water begins to fill back up. It's still going to be slow going. There still may be some small outages here and there, but hopefully with all the efforts from outside sources and us, it should slowly start to improve. In Fleming Neon, RJ Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Mayor Burke says they will be measuring how much water has filled in the tank since being shut off to determine if they will be able to turn it back on. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet has announced it is awarding funding to one eastern Kentucky county. The Wolf County Fiscal Court is receiving more than $31,000 in county road aid emergency funds. That money will be used to repair a drainage structure on Terrell Fork Road. Well, a first alert weather day is in place to start the work week, timing out that busy forecast after this break.